Well, let's talk a little bit about your, your working methodology and working with that company and, and the way you arrange a rehearsal room in a circle, the way that you have the company there for the duration of the rehearsal process and how you really begin to sort of push and pull at scenes and mm. 3D literary criticism <laughs> and, and, uh, and then how you, you sort of compute and arrange your production based on that. What do you get out of your working process? How do you work with your actors? How does it work in the rehearsal room? It, it, it's interesting. When I was a student, I, I didn't have a methodology and, I, and, I, and as a young director, I, I struggled and, and I, in, that re, in that regard, I, I didn't have a way to approach a play that was consistent, I felt. And so I remember reading a lot of books about directing and thinking, well, try that, I'll try this. And, and like anything, it's, it's trial and error. And it emerged gradually out of what I enjoy in a rehearsal room and what I found the, the best way was to explore something with the people that you're working with. You know, you have 20 other imaginations in the room with you as a director and you're an idiot if you don't use those imaginations. And there are some incredibly intelligent people in the room with you who see it with every, with, every, with every bit as much insight as you do. You know, your job is editorial to a degree. But for me, it actually emerged out of Othello here. That was the first time I worked with a lot of people in the room. I put out a lot of rugs, and I thought, I'm going to try just keeping the company together and experimenting with, with scenes. Um, playing games sometimes. Sometimes it would be simple things like, I'll switch the roles in a scene, I'll get... I mean, I remember a, a fantastic day of Othello where Claire Skinner, who was playing Desdemona, played Othello and David Harewood played Desdemona and it was revelatory to both of them and it helped that you know so that, that's just a very simple idea um, sometimes it will be um, I will involve the group a lot you know in terms of uh, in, in, in this production the full company the act the, the kind of core of 21 became the knights for six weeks of rehearsals until the knights arrived but by the time the knights actually arrived the supernumeraries we had experimented with any number of different ways of using them because the company had, had become that group. It's just a way of, of uh, exploring the play. And sometimes it can be silly. If you feel the, the mood getting too dark or too dry, perhaps too academic, then, then you can play something that's a little... Uh, that you can unlock a scene through a physical uh, trick. So I, I remember a rehearsal of Twelfth Night in which um, we played a scene as if they were rowing a boat across a lake. And I know it sounds stupid, but it, it released the scene physically. They didn't think about text anymore. Uh, they related to each other completely accurately with, because there were two people sitting next to each other and they had to row at the same time. And the teamwork of the scene and the physical life of the scene, uh, it, came, it, it, it came to life. Uh, sometimes you will find that, uh, you know, you. you you set a scene around a dinner table, for example, for, for no reason except that you have a feeling that the dynamics will be better revealed of the family around the dinner table. Uh, and someone loses their temper, you don't want them to wave their hands, so you give them knife and fork. I mean, you'll go down a very specific route. Now, in the case of this play, the first scene, we spent a lot of time, and right up to very late in the day, there were different versions. I mean, completely different versions of the first scene. One of them, and the, one of the most interesting, was a dinner scene between Lear and the whole family in which on a predetermined cue the men stood up and backed off leaving the women sitting there unaware I mean like a trick they're playing on the women a joke and Lear said yeah I've got a little thing I, we've we've all arranged this the men uh, because we know there's going to be a, a big present giving ceremony I'm going to give you my nation I'm going to give you a third each now you know you play along with my game and tell me how much you love me hmm. And the men were all in on it, drinking, and it was late, and it was, it, it was almost as if it was the end of a dinner party. And it was sinister. It was a male-dominated society. It was unfair on the women. It was exposing. And it worked very interestingly. But then there was this other version of the scene, which is this version that you'll see tonight, which was completely different. It was a very public scene. It was very exposing. It was very politically oriented. The, 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 the presence of the soldiers was very... Uh, made it made it both public and uh, and threatening. It, it was it was clear that if the wrong things were said, there was not a comfortable environment in which to be yourself. <laughs> mm. It was uh, it, 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 it increased the level of tension. So anyway, that's a good example. But there were very there were many versions of that scene, and of course there are also, there are things that happen in the circle that you can never bring onto a bigger stage. It's much easier 
the journey from the circle to full production at the Donmar is is almost straight on stage. I mm. mean, you know, we did the whole the whole of Twelfth Night in the circle, and we just moved it onto the stage. I mean, I kept everyone in the room until about three days from the end, um, and only then did little specific adjustments. Uh, but for me, it's just a way of uh, I've also freeing myself from sometimes getting stuck uh, with one or two uh, ideas and repeating myself. I mean, I think that, you know, it's very difficult to, you, you do find yourself uh, repeating certain things. And, and there, are, there are things that I use in this production that I've used before. You know, you're, you probably would notice the long table from the trial scene in The Winter's Tale. Even the behind us is very similar. Or the wheat field from a production of As You Like It, or whatever. Th th there are things that you find yourself returning to. But that's also because Shakespeare returns to them as well. And, and there, are, there are echoes within his work that are actually quite enjoyable to explore. Um, so that's, that's the working method. It, it's come out of trial and error. And it's very eccentric. And I wouldn't recommend it to anyone else, really. I, I don't <laughs> think I write a book and say, this is the way you need to rehearse. It's very personal. And I think it's a lot of it's about losing self-consciousness you know, and being able to talk in a way. The other thing that happens, which I think is very important, is that actors play and lose self-consciousness. There's a sort of throwing yourself into the water. It's a little scary the first time, but once you've got through it, you've made a fool of yourself once. It's sort of, you lose self-consciousness as performers as well. Um, and people are willing to try things and be free with things that, because they know that there's no right or wrong. There's no entrance, there's no exit, there's no audience because you, you know, you're not facing that way. You're facing any way you face, you know, and I try to move so that they don't perform towards me. Yes. So I move, you know, dot around the circle, um, make it comfortable. People are sitting on floors. Some people are sitting in chairs. Some people have armchairs. I try and keep them moving as well so that people don't always go back to the same place. Um, sometimes you'll start a scene just by sitting on the floor and talking the scene to each other, and then, you know, you'll have people come together and do a closer version, expanded version, and, and then you grow out of that. And then sometimes you get it right the first time. I mean, literally, you, and you have to recognize when something special has happened. You'll experiment with other things, but you'll always have that first version of the scene in your head. Um, and there's a line from Polonius in Hamlet. He says, and I've quoted this to you before, but he says, we shall, by indirections, find directions out. And that's a great ex uh, descriptive line about my rehearsal process. Mm -hmm. You know, If you go down enough blind alleys, you might find the one that leads somewhere. <laughs>